Thank you so much, praise and worship team, for that wonderful session that you've led us. Uh, we thank you. We thank you very much. I want to welcome each and every one of us to Mombasa Lighthouse Church once again, Church Online. Thank you for being there and thank you for uh, being in church today. I would like us to go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6 through 7. Together. Verse 6 starts by saying, The Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites, to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains and in the lowlands, in the south and in the sea coast, to the land of the Canaanites, and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for this wonderful Sunday morning. We thank you for you have given us an opportunity to hear your word, to be corrected of you, to be instructed by you. And Lord, as we come before you today, we release ourselves to you for guidance and for direction. Bless each and every person listening, together with myself as I release this word. I pray for all, for guidance, and I pray for wisdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Uh, and without wasting a lot of time, I would like to introduce us to the service today. I would love to preach to us and to talk to us today on a message entitled, A Church on the Move. For the last few Sundays, we've been listening to the voice of God and working towards what God is telling us. And today, I just want to remind us what the heart of God is. From the time in memorial in the Old Testament, He loved seeing His people moving towards where He has called them to be. And today, it's no different. Because the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9, we read to verse 10, that... That which has been is what will be. Let me repeat that. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Verse 10 says, Is there anything of which it may be said, See, this is new. It has already been in, uh, in ancient times before us. Church, nothing is new under the sun. If from the word go, God wanted his people to be on the move so that they can attain what he has prepared for them. I see no difference today. Nothing is new under the sun. And I would like to raise this to us today and say this, that our God is a God who will always desire the good things for his people. He has good plans for each and every person that cares to listen. He has good plans for those that he created. Those who are called by his own name, he has good plans for them. He can never leave them, neither can he ever forsake them. The children of Israel from the book we've just read in the book of Deuteronomy had just finished 40 years in the wilderness. And now they have just defeated two kings, the king of Og and the king uh, of the Amorites who is King Sihon. They had just defeated uh, Sihon the king of the Amorites and Og the king of Bashan according to Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 4. And when you read you'll realize a few things here. That the, Moses is choosing this opportunity and this time to address the children of Israel. And I was asking myself why should Moses start reminding these people as though they were not there. It was important for Moses to talk to the children of Israel because 90% of the people that left Egypt and had seen the miracles of God in the wilderness and in Egypt were no more. Right now, Moses is about to show them where they are headed or they have already seen. They are just crossing over the other side of the Jordan and possess the promised land. And so Moses starts telling them how things work and he reminds and he, he starts 
with a very interesting place, which is the, 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 the mountain of Sinai or the Mount Sinai, otherwise known as Horeb. He starts by saying, God started by telling them, you've dwelt on this mountain for too long. You need to understand what kind of a mountain this mountain was. It is at this mountain that the children of Israel had decided to remove all their jewelries and all this stuff and make a God for themselves that will take them back to Egypt. This is a mountain that God had allowed these children to be and to dwell around because of their stubbornness. They spent a whole year, they wasted a whole year simply because they were not obedient to the things of God. This is the same mountain that Moses would come down from and the children of Israel would say, please cover your face. We can't look at you. This is a very interesting type of mountain. And this is the mountain that God is saying, you've dwelt on this mountain for too long. For far too long in the book of Exodus, you'd see the children of Israel forgetting that it's God who has led them to where they are and has been taking care of them for all this time. And whenever they would win battles and they would see that there are no challenges, they would forget this same God and they would begin doing their own things and God would punish them or God would bring laws that will cause them to be contained in one place so that he can govern them and lead them to where he wanted them to be. So God tells Moses, you've dwelt on this mountain for far too long. This is the same mountain that the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 18 to verse 21 that we read of in this book. We read it in verse 18. It says, For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burned with fire and to blackness and darkness and tempests and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it beg that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. This is a mountain that even caused Moses to tremble with fear. It's a mountain where God dwelt. It's a mountain that brought the real essence of the presence of God. It's a mountain that was continuously surrounded by the presence of God. This is where they were. And one might be mistaken to think that God is now telling them, get away from my presence. You see, our God is in every place at all times. It would have been easy for the children of Israel to make a God out of that mountain, but they never did that. They obeyed and followed why they knew this God is a God who cannot be contained in one place. And so Moses is telling them, this is what God told them. And he's telling a generation that never left Egypt. Most of them were born in the wilderness. And now he's talking to them. 40 years of, of, of being on a journey. He's reminding them and taking them back to what transpired. Lest they forget the kind of God they are going to serve in Canaan. It is easy to forget what God has done for you once you reach a place where there are no situations that are challenging you. It's very easy to forget. It's very easy to turn your worship into idolatry if you don't understand the God who brought you to where you are as you worship. It's very, very easy. And that's why God would like his people to be on the move so that they can focus on where he's taking them rather than what he's doing at this point in time. We may lose focus if we don't continuously focus on Jesus himself as a church. It is very easy to start glorifying scientists because they are busy looking for the medication or the cure of COVID-19. It's very easy to start blaming others and seeing them as demons and ourselves as, a saint, as saints simply because we think these things originated from them. God is telling us we are a church on the move. We are not to stagnate and start seeing other people as if they are wrong or we are right. We are not to worship them either if they are doing the right thing. We've been called to focus on a journey that God is taking us. 
church we serve a mighty God who knows the end or he knows the end from the beginning and he knows the beginning before the end he is a mighty 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 God I would like us to take a closer look again at the book of Deuteronomy 1 6 up to 7 let's go back again to it and let's just see what it says so that we can understand where we are headed the Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb saying you have dwelt long enough at this mountain turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites to all the neighboring places in the plain in the mountains and in the lowland in the south and in the seacoast to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon as far as the great river the river Euphrates it's like Moses is, is reminding them of how they were told to go and conquer all these places simply because they had completed the discipline that was in their life most people say that at this mountain these people lived as if they were in bondage simply because the book of Hebrews narrates a scenario whereby things were a bit tough as a matter of fact when you read the Old Testament this mountain was not to be touched by any human being apart from Moses this mountain was not to be actually be uh, al I mean, nobody was allowed to come to this mountain not even a, a sheep or a goat or a bird nothing was allowed to come close to this mountain and so many people would say it's a mountain that made these children to live as slaves but I would like to call it a mountain where discipline was found. It is as a result of this discipline of obeying and giving God the reverence he required that allowed God to tell them now you've dwelt here for too long. In other words, you've learned what you needed to learn. Let's move on and take over what I have promised you. Let's go to Hebrews a little bit so that you may understand what I'm trying to say. In the book of Hebrews 12 verse 18 to verse 21 we read, for you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burnt with fire and to be black and, uh, 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 and to blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that the word should not the word the word should not be spoken to them anymore for they could not endure what was commanded and if so much as beast touch, touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. Verse 21. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. Moses himself said he is extremely or exceedingly afraid and trembling. The presence of God was not to be joked about. And now he starts at this mountain telling these people remember how we were told we have dwelt on this mountain for too long. In other words, we've learned what we needed to learn. We need to go and exercise what was being taught of us. Now, at this mountain, there he kept them for about a year. At this mountain. It's a mountain that was acting as a school. To cause them to remember who God was. Now. Because they have learned. And they've been taught. They need to move forward. They could not enter Canaan. With the same mentality they had from Egypt. They could not enter Canaan. With the same thinking they had. During the wilderness times. The place where they would call Mara at some point. Because they were complaining bitterly to Moses. All these complaints that were there could not be allowed into Canaan. And God had to teach them at Horeb. There are situations and circumstances that happen around us. That are meant to teach us and to correct us and to instruct us. So that we can be ready to possess what God has planned for us. As a church, we are a church on the move. You are a church on the move. We don't need to focus on the circumstances and situations around us. We need to focus on the God who has allowed us to be where we are. Because he has good plans for us. He has good plans for each and every one of us. He has good things in store for us ahead of us. If only we can focus on him and the directions that he's giving us. He is a faithful God. God charged the children of Israel to leave the mountain of God. That they may enter the good land which he had promised them. Yes, God was there. The presence of God was there. 
miracles were happening right there. They would see the presence. They would hear the voice of God. Moses would hear the voice of God. But God said, you need to move. It would have been easy for the children of Israel to make an idol out of that mountain. But they chose to go as God told them to move. They had been trained by God and formed into a priestly army. And they had, uh, they had a defined or a definite goal for the journey. They now understand the definite goal for the journey. They are not moving as if they don't know who they are. They know who they really are. They are people ordered and controlled and guided by God. They are now focusing on the promised land because that's where they are supposed to be. Church, never accept to be driven by ungodly fear or allow yourself to celebrate any victory at the expense of your destiny. This is the downfall of many people. We celebrate at the expense of our destiny. It is possible for a person to forget where they are going simply because the victory before them is too great. It is possible for a people to forget where they are headed simply because where they are seems like everything is in that place. It is possible for a person to forget their God simply because the things that God gave them sounds and feels and looks as if they are more glorious than God himself. Listen, never ever celebrate at the expense of your destiny. Never allow your fears to stop you from moving to where God is ordering you to move. It is easy to turn a godly thing into an idol. Right now the world is facing so many situations. Our nation is facing so many situations. And it's not hard to hear people complaining, including us pastors. But we need to understand that we have a bigger calling than you can ever think. We have a bigger calling. We have a destiny that is before us. Revival is coming. Let's not shortchange ourselves simply because things don't look as if they should be where they are right now. Or let us not shortchange ourselves because we are simply focusing on the circumstances rather than where we are headed. We serve a mighty God. Though God brings his people into trouble and affliction, into spiritual trouble and affliction of the mind, he knows when they have dwelt on that situation for far too long. He can never allow us to continue dwelling on a situation for too long. He knows the reason as to why he's taking us in those situations. You need to thank him for who he is and you need to praise him for who he has continued to be for he will never change so that you and I may not perish. He will never change. He's a faithful God. All this morning may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. If we can just prepare ourselves to raise up the banner and declare that he is our savior regardless of what we are going through, nothing is too hard for our God. It's at Mount Horeb that the children of Israel thought they would replace God with a God. And what were they replacing God with? The same resources that God asked them to borrow from the Egyptians. They took it out and started making a God that can take them back to Egypt. It's very easy to forget where you're coming from. It's very easy. And if you still remember where you're going or where you're coming from, it's also very easy to be sidetracked by the journey. We need to focus on the destiny and the God of the destiny. We need to continue focusing on this mighty God who changes not. Situation and circumstances do change. Right now, COVID-19 will, will be a thing of the past in a few years to come. Just like tuberculosis is a thing of the past and people can be treated. Just like uh, uh, malaria and just like polio and just like Ebola and many other diseases that have come. Plagues that have come and, and hit this world so hard. Right now we don't talk about them as we used to. I remember in the 80s people would mention AIDS and would shudder. But today nobody even shudders when you hear the word HIV AIDS. COVID-19 should not be the reason why we should prophesy with wrong prophecy. COVID-19 should not be the reason as to why we should miss our destiny because we are focusing on what the government is doing rather than what God is doing. COVID-19 should not be an idol that we are glorifying more than the name of Jesus. We should rise up above all this because we are a children called for a purpose. 
He is a mighty God and he has a good reason for it. And so they, they stripped themselves their ornaments, the gold, the silver, the whatever they had, and started building or making an idol. And when they did this, Moses came with the Ten Commandments and he was so angry and some of them perished after this. They were punished heavily because they thought they've attained what they needed to attain. They have knowledge, they have understanding, they know what they need to do. And they lost focus for a moment. In Deuteronomy, Moses tells them, you've dwelt on this mountain for too long. But you need to understand this. They were leaving that mountain because they had learned what they needed to learn. Which was the fear of God for who He is, not for what they've heard about Him. God is telling them to rise up, go to Canaan, meet the Canaanites, enter and take possession. It is all your own. He's not telling them they're going to be defeated. He's telling them, enter and take all that is before you. He says, behold, I've set everything before you. He's saying, behold, let's go back to verse 8 of Deuteronomy chapter 1. He says, See, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your father. Go and possess. Go and take it. Go and own it. It's yours for the taking. He's not telling them they are going to struggle. He's telling them it's yours. I've already given it to you. When God commands us to go forward in our Christian cause, He sets the heavenly canon before us for an encouragement. So don't look at the things you were enjoying initially. Don't start complaining because you're no longer accessing the sanctuary. Stop complaining because right now you're not seeing your congregant. Listen, it's another opportunity right now. It's another opportunity God is giving us to evangelize each and every place that we are at. It's another opportunity God is giving us today so that you as a cell leader can evangelize your area. So that you as a pastor can evangelize your neighbors. It's high time they start hearing you praising God, worshipping God. When was the last time they understood who you are? When was the last time they heard you pray? When was the last time they heard you standing outside your gate and telling God you are the Alpha and the Omega. God is giving us another opportunity. At this point in time, even those who don't believe in God are believing that it's only God who can save us from this circumstance. At this point in time, even the people who believe that God is not omnipresent are talking of a God who can only save us at this point in time. Listen to me. He is a mighty God. He is looking upon us to extend everything that He has given us to everyone who has doubted. He's looking and trying to see whether we are going to use and capitalize this opportunity so that we can spread the gospel no matter what. He is a faithful God. He is a great God. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts 1.8 And you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses first in Jerusalem. Now listen first in Jerusalem. Why in Jerusalem? Simply because that's where the, 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 the disciples initially were. You cannot evangelize outside if where you are nothing has been done. We have this power. We have this anointing. And our home area, our estate must be evangelized. There's no time like this time where the gospel is penetrating to everyone where the gospel is penetrating even to the places where you never thought of. People are turning on their TVs, people are turning on the internet and they are seeing people ministering. This is an opportunity for you and I to minister to every person who would care to listen. Who would care to listen. Turn with me to Matthew 16, 18. In Matthew 16, 18 we read, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hate shall not prevail against you. I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell, hate shall not prevail against you. Listen to Jesus. 
Just like when God told the children of Israel, you've dwelt on this mountain for too long, it's time to move. God is addressing Peter after asking them, who do people say I am? Some said he was Elijah, uh, John the Baptist, some said this, some said... And Jesus turned to them and said, but who do you say you are? And Peter answered correctly and said, you are the Christ, son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Now listen. And then he said, and I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, which rock? On this revelation, the revelation that Peter received from the Father, not from flesh and blood, became a foundation, a rock that is walked to be built upon. If we have a revelation of who Christ is, it's high time we rise up. <laughs> and allow him to build his church. And then he made a statement that is interesting. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hate shall not prevail against it. What is Jesus trying to tell the disciples? He's trying to tell them, the church I'm about to build is not an ordinary church. It's a church that will be a moving church. You and I understand that gates are not meant to move. Gates are meant to stop people from coming in or going out. And Jesus is telling his disciples on this revelation that I'm the Christ. I will build my church and the gates of hate shall not prevail upon, against it. Meaning the church will start moving towards the gates themselves. It's going to move towards that gate. It's going to bring that gate down. Every barrier that has hidden the church from going in or had blocked the church from going in must come down. The church is meant to be a going church. The problem that we have is that we have continued to be a waiting church. The time of waiting ended when the Holy Spirit showed up. We were filled with power from heaven. We were clothed with power from heaven and this fire cannot contain a person in one place. Rise up church. God is calling you for a reason. Rise up, saints. God is calling us for a reason. For there is a certain power arising as you obey. There is this power. If you're a cell leader, rise up. If you're a pastor, rise up. Do not contain that fire. Do not quench it. Do not put it off. Rise up and say, this is the moment that the God of heaven has created us for. He has cr created us to change our world. He has created us to turn our world upside down. This is the church that Christ promised to build upon a revelation of who he is. Why are the gates of hell still standing before us? Why are the gates of hell still? We are a moving church. Let's start moving. It's not about wait ye. It's about go ye. That's the great commission. commission. Go ye, not wait ye. We need to start moving and make disciples of all nations we need to move when you wait you are delaying the advancement of his kingdom stop desiring to congregate back into your sanctuaries until you start moving until you advance the kingdom of God don't delay the advancement of his kingdom the church that was founded on truth that was revealed by Peter or to Peter is a going church as not and not driven by fear. It has to go. It's a church that is moving. It's a church that is moving in the direction that God is ordering to move. It doesn't matter if it's through persecution or through the desires for mission. The church must advance fearlessly. It doesn't matter if it's through persecution or through the desire for mission. The church must advance fearlessly and invade the gates of hell. It doesn't matter. What are you doing? It doesn't matter if you're going to serve him because you're afraid. It doesn't matter. Listen, God can use anything. God can use persecution. God can use anything. If you use the mountain, to discipline the children of Israel so that they can possess. He can use COVID-19. 
19 to contain you where you are so that you can advance this gospel as it's intended to so that you can reveal him for who he really is he can use anything the church spread and continued to grow when the, the when the, the disciple sensed and felt persecution they went all over and spread the gospel listen we have to advance the gospel regardless of the circumstances that are surrounding us we must advance the gospel Romans 8 verse 15 states very clearly Romans 8 verse 15 for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit of adoption whom we cry out Abba Father we are not just advancing a kingdom of just another God who is to be feared somewhere no this is our father and he has given us a spirit that gives us this revelation that he is our father if we don't advance it right now we are losing the purpose as to why we are here side time we rise up as a church side time you rise up as a cell leader it's high time you rise up as a, 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 as, a, as a member of whatever church you are in right now. It's high time you stand and be counted as a person who is advancing the gospel of Jesus Christ. I would like to say this as I close. Our God is a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can think or imagine if we obey Today, wherever you are, you need to ask God for wisdom and direction. You need to ask God, where should I go next? You need to just walk out of your compound and just kneel out there after this service and start thanking God for the estate you are, you are in. You need to just stand up in the middle of the road, wherever you are, if you're using a phone to listen to me right now and say, thank you, Jesus, for you care about this land. It's high time. You go to, the, that, to that market and declare peace and declare love and declare healing and declare everything that is good that comes from God upon those people. It's high time you start speaking positive. And now, I'd like to say the last blessings to each and every one of us even as I thank you for listening to me. And let's exercise as a church the good work that God has given and is placing before us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you Lord for the listener. Thank you for the church online. I bless each and every one of them, O oh God. Cover them with your precious blood as they serve you the whole of this week. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.